So now here at Baptist, there's a new MRI that was FDA approved uh, a couple months ago where we can actually implant a pacemaker that's actually compatible in an MRI scanner. So patients uh, who have uh, a significant uh, disease of the joints or patients that might need to be evaluated with an MRI for a possible uh, transient ischemic attack or a stroke, uh, if they have one of these types of pacemakers, they can actually still go ahead and get an MRI safely uh, and not be excluded from an MRI due to the presence of uh, prosthetic metal uh, material inside their body. Well, in years past, it was actually technologically difficult to design a pacemaker that actually wouldn't heat or cook the tissue uh, under a large magnetic field uh, that's present with an MRI scanner. And so now they've been, able, they've been able to adapt the technology to where these new pacemaker leads as well as the pacemaker generator uh, won't overheat inside the patient's body uh, when an MRI is actually ordered to visualize part of the spine or part of the brain or any other uh, part of the body that's of interest. Our first case done here at Baptist last week was done on a patient uh, who needed a pacemaker for slow heart rate. Uh, this patient's heart rate uh, was significantly slow and he was unable to actually increase his heart rate with exercise or any sort of uh, metabolic demand that requires the heart rate to increase. Uh, the patient also had a history of uh, passing out or syncope and so his indications for a pacemaker were clearly uh, met in terms of a slow heart rate as well as passing out. Uh, the patient also had a long-standing history of right knee problems related to a partial tear of his anterior cruciate ligament uh, of the right knee. Now, he had been seen by orthopedic surgeons in the past uh, who told the patient that in the future he may need to have an MRI of the knee uh, if a surgery on that knee is actually considered in the future. If the patient had received a standard pacemaker, uh, then from that point on he would no longer be eligible for an MRI of the knee. Well fortunately this pacemaker that we just implanted is actually a type of pacemaker that can be used safely in patients who need to undergo an MRI of any part of the body, uh, including the knee. And so by putting in this pacemaker, uh, you'll have the full benefits of a dual chamber AV sequential pacemaker. And also, if he needs to have an MRI of the knee or the brain or any other part of the body down the road, uh, he'll still be able to get that uh, potentially crucial diagnostic uh, uh, test uh, in regards to his treatment of his uh, chronic knee pain. And so we're very happy in the sense that we haven't limited uh, his diagnostic uh, potential uh, of receiving an MRI for his knee problems. Uh, Dr. Al Figueroa had followed this patient for numerous years uh, and he was the one who actually noted that the patient had significant, uh, a, a significant history of uh, chronic orthopedic issues and was the first to recognize that, listen, this patient might actually need an MRI of the knee in the future, uh, and if we put in a standard type pacemaker, then he may not be able to get an MRI, which could actually determine whether or not he actually needs to undergo a knee surgery if his uh, right knee continues to have problems. And so I think it's uh, crucial that the clinician uh, recognizes uh, which patients are actually appropriate for these MRI-compatible pacemakers. Uh, because in theory, sure, every patient could possibly need an MRI uh, that receives a pacemaker, uh, but it's probably not practical to put these MRI-compatible pacemakers in every patient. But I think Dr. Figueroa uh, and his nurse Jennifer did a very good job of really stratifying the patient's risk of needing an MRI in the future and sending this patient uh, for an MRI-compatible pacemaker uh, so that Basically, he, he'll be able to receive all the uh, necessary diagnostic tools uh, in management of his partial ACL tear in his right knee.